Oh. In Luke chapter 9, verses 57 through 62, we see that Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. And as he's walking along, a man comes up to him and says, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. And he says to him, Foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another man came up to him and said, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. But Jesus says, Have you considered what you have told me? And he talks about his family life and how he misses those uh, who are back in his home. Revelation 20, the verses 12, talks about the end of time, and it says, The books were opened, and another book was opened, which was the, the book of life, and the dead were judged out of the things which were written according to their works. Three. According to their works. <laughs> There's going to be a day when Jesus comes back, and the clouds are rolled back, and the, the trumpet sounds, and the dead in Christ will rise, and all of us will go before the throne room of God, and there will be two sides, the right and the left. And they'll be separated according to their deeds. Are you a sheep or are you a goat this morning? You might be looking down at your clothing and seeing that you don't have fur or giant ears or even horns. You are in fact a human, so how does that apply to you? In Genesis chapter 3, we see there's a big change up where you have God in his creation account as he is making the entire world. He speaks everything into existence, but when you get into Genesis chapter 3, there is a change up. And... God begins to create man in his own image, and it's a uh, very intimate situation where you have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit all going in on this one project to create you and me. We're a little bit different than the rest of the animals, and you see that we were created in the likeness of God. That is, we have souls. We have uh, this part of us that will go on living forever. There's a little bit... Uh, okay. Genesis 6 verse 8 says that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. In the midst of all of this wickedness, you find one man who is striving to do what's right. God comes to him and has a mission for him to save all of humanity. And in doing so, he preserves... Right. 